Um, hello, everyone. Um, we should be live now. Hi. I think we're live. Yeah, we should be. Yeah. Sorry, I think my feed is going to get a little okay. better. It's just going to take a second. Um, okay. Cool. Yeah, I think we're. I mean, I think we're up. Yeah. So I guess I'll just. Uh, so, um, hey everyone, welcome to another week of the G Five A Foundation for Contemporary Cultures Virtual Cinema Club. Um, my name is Ashan from Bombay. My host, co-host here. Yeah, I'm Neeraj. Um, I'm a cinematographer. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and um, yeah, we're just um, excited to have all of you guys here. Um, this week, we, I mean, actually, just every week, we watch, you know, usually two films by a filmmaker. And currently, we are watching, you know, films from contemporary Indian filmmakers. And we're just, um, you know, it's been an interesting exploration so far. And we're looking to kind of dive further into the films out of India. And so this week we watched a film by Omesh Vinayak Kulkarni, um, a film called Deol. I think that's how you pronounce it, right, Sean? Yeah, I think, yeah. Yeah. Sounds right. Cool. Um, and yeah. Do you want to kind of just dive in and kind of get into the story a little bit of like what the film's about, I guess? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, so basically uh, the film is set in this um, village right in, in Maharashtra which is sort of in between, I think, um, based on, on how the, the characters and all speak, uh, like talk about it. It's sort of based um, between Bombay and Pune, I think. Um, and so it, it sort of follows the story of a few, uh, few people in the, in the village and like, I guess various stakeholders, you could say. Um, so there's, there's obviously the lead-ish character, right? Like um, who sort of sets the ball rolling mm -hmm. um, and sort of gets, it, it's sort of part of the, let's say, quote unquote, inciting incident, Keisha, right? Yeah. Um, and and then there's, there's a few other, you know, there's a group of sort of guys who are working with the, the government liaison um, and, you know, to sort of like improve the facilities in in the village and similarly with um and then there's um i, I think he's the the i was trying to i don't know what his like his you know how would who's the like he's part of the government i guess he's yeah he's a, i think he's just like reps. a politician yeah exactly yeah um, yeah so he's sort of their their representative um yeah. And and so what's 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 interesting is that it it we sort of see all of these different like storylines and different like relationships and you know we get to understand what each different like I guess like the within the ensemble of characters what you know what they want what they're looking for and sort of what they're interested in and right. uh, what's what's in what's nice or what's what's interesting rather is that it sort of follows um it, it like begins through this this the protagonist keisha's search for this cow right mm -hmm. um and ha and sort of like finding uh finding her and then it sort of then he sits by this tree you know the spike where where the story begins yeah right um you there in your yeah, yeah i'm here yeah so. um you know and so ba so basically what 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 ends up happening is is that he sees a, a vision of this this god and then sort of you know that sort of sparks um, the village into some sort of life, mm -hmm. you know, almost. Yeah. Um, and so there's, so there's like, there's, I mean, there's like a lot going on. So I don't yeah, know, there's uh, a lot of different parts. I think we, we can. I think let's start with Keisha's. Yeah. Let's start with Keisha's journey because that's the center of what the film is kind of based on, and then all the things kind of stem from that. I think and. It's it's yeah. it's really kind of like an exploration of this village um kind of 
deal like kind of not dealing with but like you know this village and its modernization i guess right and it's kind of um you see like these um you know you see this need for yeah. you, you i guess you see this need and i think the 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 and i think you have like kind of the driving force of that need being anna right the character of anna who's like you know we need a hospital and we need um things that are yeah. essential to kind of um help the people's yeah. lives and what he it's thinks sort of, i guess i guess it's sort of um present presenting um go ahead go ahead no, no, no go ahead um but yeah it's like like you said it's like kind of i think it's like presenting yeah. kind of like this um yeah, like yeah. yeah i'm here can you hear me i can see you properly hello it's kind of yeah yeah yeah, I think there's just a bit of a lag. Okay. Um, no, it's just like a balance between yeah. old okay. world and new world. Um, kind of like um, them coming out of, um, you know, the old and yeah. moving into the new, I guess, so to speak. Or, you know, and you have these, um, I guess, different set of ideals. And, like, I think certain characters see that and certain characters don't see that, right? Oh, um. yeah. I mean, I think I think what's what's what what's interesting is um, well, what's interesting is that they both like they they're both sort of moving towards the same goal, mm -hmm. right? Um, but just in ways, right? And I think that's sort of one of the questions or one of the, the you know quandaries that the film sort of puts up. Um, and present what do you like because because i think because i think they're all they're all looking for modernization of some sort right like mm -hmm. to to bring their village back to life is something that Bahá'u says at the you know towards the end of the film and right, where where they their goal was to you know bring this sort of sleepy town and and i think i think what's um What's interesting is that you know it's sort of that age old like dilemma or choice, right? Is that mm -hmm. do you follow sort of modern science or do you um, you know follow sort of like a more traditional um, religion? And faith set of um, values yeah. Past. and and i think yeah exactly and i think i think you know it's sort of i mean one of the the things that's interesting is that or um or unsurprising i should say is that you know is that it presents these these two things as different from one another mm -hmm. right and as a sort of fighting against one another when yeah. you know i think there's a lot of merit in looking at them together as sort of like the same side of a, a coin yeah you know that how do you use these um these different like beliefs values etc because i think what everyone in some sense wants is is similar right in the film mm -hmm. um but just the way they yeah and of course i mean there's like a nice nice dose of like power struggle um and sort of like some level of like a betrayal, um, mm -hmm. you know, in, uh, in there. So, and I, you know, I mean, I think that's, um, a lot to yeah. sort of like digest. Yeah. Um, so I think it's like, know. but yeah, but I mean, I think we, so let's, I mean, let's, but to that point, uh, I with, with Keisha and yeah. his, his journey, right. And yeah. 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 No, go ahead. Um, no, I think to that point that you made, it's really, and I think like one of the interesting points that come out, stem out of that is the character of Bao, right? Because I think at first he kind of realizes the need yeah. for what the, like, I think he knows what's best for what the village needs. But then at the end of the day, he has to play the, like, you know, the game of politics and, you know, um, okay, how yeah. can you kind yeah. of exactly. stay relevant and all of these other things. And he's kind of forced into this situation um, and he isn't able to kind of stand his ground. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's really interesting is that I think it's his nephew 
um, that kind of turns on him. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, it's like, you yeah, would think exactly. that the younger generation would see the, you know, you know, see what, you know, could be like, you know, added to the village. But, you know, he kind of, at the end of yeah, the day, yeah. just falls into that trap as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you see that, you see that, that modern angle of it, right? Mm -hmm. Through, through his nephew and, and those gang like a gang of guys yeah um in that they're sort of they've, they've sort of what they've done what they end up doing is just commodifying it right yeah and they're sort of focused on on the profits um and sort of exactly. like the paraphernalia around um religion yeah religion and sort of what you know i guess one of the um critiques you know, of in the, uh, you know, yeah. that it's sort of um, uh, an or like a, a business, right? Really, yeah. at the at the end of some day, exactly. Um, and I think that's sort of one of the one of the things that I think um, is trying to be highlighted in in the film for sure. Right, absolutely. Right, is that is that you you've taken any? I think that's something you know which which comes right back to. To Keisha's like journey, right? At, we see him at the end, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think that um, that's sort of like a very pointed. Uh, Ishan, you dropped out for a second. Sorry. You're just, okay. Yeah, now you're back. Okay, cool. I, I was saying that it, it's sort of naively, naively innocent, right? Mm -hmm. Um this this like vision that he's had and you know he's he almost like Keisha almost without thinking right just sort of tells people right it's not that he's he's not bragging or he's not saying like look this happened to me yeah right but he's saying that oh um you know god's come to our village, village right? yeah. like he's, he's blessed our village and he's Absolutely. not he's not looking at himself at all mm -hmm. um so and you know there's sort of that like very like naive innocence and like that selflessness which is we you know um it's just got like a very childlike um it makes him like a it, it makes him like a very endearing character i think especially in his relationship with anna and then also like for example there's that scene where he gets the new shirts and then he goes and sh you know he he shows anna because he's excited about yeah. it right and there's a certain like you know charming quality yeah, about yeah, yeah. Um, geisha as a character especially um and i think that's like you know it's and it's i think kind of geisha's journey from start to finish and how he sees what has happened to this city as a result of you know the commodification of religion and you know how it's turned yeah, into exactly. what it's turned is kind of the journey that we as the audience are going through as we're seeing all of these events kind of unfold so i think that's like you know in a way that's the shoe that you know as a director he's putting you in because he's like this is kind of the the perspective or the viewpoint i want you to see the film from yeah yeah right um and then i think so yeah so keisha's journey basically it starts with him like you know seeing this you know god um and then you know he tells a few people and eventually it turns into a sitch scenario where they're like let's make this a temple and you know it turns into a whole thing obviously and then i think the first time you really see where things start to like kind of turn on its head especially as a as a viewer but also as mm. geisha's character is kind of the way they treat the cow which is like right. kind of for him like almost more valuable or more important to him than the religion or, you know, the God that he saw in the tree and all of those other things, yeah. you know, for him, that's, um, kind of like everything. Exactly. And exactly. so, um, and so, yeah, so I think when, when he's, you know, when the, when the cow is injured, for example, and then, you know, the people are still mm -hmm. trying to get their blessings and everything. And he kind of is like, can't you see, what's happening in a way and it's and it's kind of like and as, as a viewer i think you also have that moment of relief it's like okay finally you know someone in this village is seeing what's happening and getting it you know other than yeah, uh, yeah, other yeah. than anna who kind of disappears 
Um, yeah, who sort of like retreats from from any of this stuff. Exactly, exactly. Um, and then, um, and then you have all these like series of moments, and then it eventually like gets to this point where um, you know, obviously, the cow dies, and you know, they don't even let him into the temple. Um, and I think that's where it almost like you know completely pushes him away. Um, sorry, Sean, I think you froze a second. Yeah, for a second. Um, but yeah, it, it completely pushes Keisha out almost. And then, yeah, exactly. And then Keisha has that vision, right? Where he sees the, 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 the robber, um, who's played by Nasiruddin mm. Shah. And yeah. I which mean, is apparently his first, um, uh, appearance in, in Marathi films. Oh, wow. Which oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. So cool. it was very unexpected also. Yeah. I was like, is that him? Yeah. 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 Right. Name? Yeah. So, so you have, you know, that character that comes in for that one scene and it's, um, it's a very interesting moment because it's kind of like, I mean, you pointed this out, so I'll let you kind of share it. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think what, what, what made, I mean, what seemed abundantly clear, at least when I was watching it is that, you know, he's, Keisha sort of, you know, he's gone through this like series of emotions, right. And he's feeling very disillusioned with his his village and his like um i guess just everyone he's he's known right even um even his mother i think or mother-in-law um, right or like to be uh right when he asks her like how often is is um are you going to the temple has she gone yeah how how often when was the last time you went to the temple and all of that um uh, and then he know you know like there's sort of that like again, that juxtaposition of tradition versus modernity when he says this TV, right? You're just glued to this TV mm-hmm. um, and that's all you're doing. And, you know, I mean, he even tells his, I don't know if they, they're not married or they are married, I forget. I think they're like, like kind um, of like, yeah, they're just like lovers, but they're not married yet and he's about to propose yeah, to yeah. her. Yeah, and then he agrees right after Anal goes to Bangalore. He tells her, like, I'm ready to go to the big city with yeah. or, like, to a city with you. Yeah. Um, but let's go to Bangalore and stuff. And then I think, you know, that even, like, through all of that, I think when when um, the cow dies and, and, you know, he sort of is mm-hmm. pushed over the edge, he sort of just, you know, steals the idol yeah. right? mm-hmm. and runs away. And um, I think in that... Sean, I think you. Sorry, Sean, I think you froze up a little bit, so you might want to repeat that. Um, I was saying, I was saying that he, he steal, he steals the idol, right? Yeah. After, um, after that, and then, and then, basically, what what happens is like he sets it free because he's sort of, he's commenting, you know, very explicitly about how the the villagers have just like caged, mm-hmm. caged up, um, one the cow and then the the idol and sort of just. In, in that sense saying they've caged up the, the god that came mm-hmm. to their village right. um, to bless them and he's sort of like you know very and like very explicitly setting it setting it free right, right, um, right and then obviously like he goes he's sort of walking around and like you know on a walkabout kind of thing um, and he sees this this bandit basically who's stuck uh, who's like uh, you know, sort of like just resting and you see that his leg is injured, right? And mm. then the cow's leg earlier was injured. He was right. tending to the cow. And so here he gives him, he gives the bandit water, um, like you said, who's paid by Nasruddin Shah. Um, and that, some, you know, I was like, oh, this is this is the cow, right? Like a personification of of the cow, of the god. Mm-hmm. And, you know, again, he's here. Um, and Keisha is the one who sees him. And, and he's the one that, and he's kind of like um, you know you talked about this earlier, but like kind of the naivety of the character of Keisha, like he's a robber, and he even questions like he even kind of gets on the offensive in that scene in a way a little bit like you know being like you know you're here to like rob the temple and this and that, yeah, but at exactly. the same time he's such a you know charming nice character that he cares for him, he offers him water, he like you know yeah exactly. he's very um. And it's kind of like how he treated the cow. After, 
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. After I think after everything, like you know, he's finished, and then he he offers him water again, right? Mm-hmm. Which is sort of that thing, like, do you want any more? Um, and then obviously he he walks away, like they you know they part ways. The uh, the bandits like still sitting there, waiting for his reinforcements, and then Keisha goes and then turns around, right? and looks back just to, to look at the bandit and he's disappeared mm-hmm. right so again sort of one um i guess one more piece of evidence that seems to suggest that that's um that that was the intention of right. this this bandit and like what uh, the significance um yeah. rather of the bandit and i think that i mean that's that's sort of like an interesting thing you know it, it sort of brings a question like does is he has he seen like does this second vision so to speak happen because he's done the right thing right or does you know and and in that sense like set him free so he's sort of just Mm -hmm. coming back and it's it's obviously more prolonged and prominent uh, a vision obviously Mm because it's not like you know the the first one that sets off film he's sort of he's he's resting and like Mm -hmm. there's it's very hot so you know you might think that it's like yeah heat uh related like it's it's sort of like a mirage yeah. or like a um you know that kind of thing and it's like very fleeting right? and like yeah and, and here you have like conversation you have you know exactly exactly it's like it's more of an interaction uh, than a um like a vision so yeah. to speak you know yeah exactly and it, it's it's kind of like it's an i mean it's an interesting like i guess it's an interesting like sequence of events Mm -hmm. right that yeah it's um, a great beat i think that kind of in a way um pulls things together you know at the end for especially for keisha's journey um yeah because i think he's the thing that kind of ties the entire uh film along and i mean not to mention not to forget to mention at least um there is also uh oh one second i think you froze um no i'm good oh you're good. good okay yeah um (laughs) not to forget to mention there's also like the other part of the whole idea of like you know civilization and the modernity like modernization of things where there's the um the archaeology site which is right like you know in that neighbor i guess neighboring village or neighboring area you know um yeah yeah just like just outside yeah yeah and so like i mean and you know there's obviously that sequence where kind of Anna talks about it and, you know, explains yeah. the, the meaning of that and, and the, all of that. The freckles of... Yeah, exactly. Um, which is like not, I don't know, it's like not a, like the word, the word he uses and then freckles, I feel like it's not, mm. it's not the thing. The subtitle, like, yeah, the subtitles for it. Yeah, like it said, yeah, it said like, oh, we're just freckles in the... Yeah. Mm-hmm. choice of whatever because um, um, I mean it's it's more like just saying that we're like small specks yeah in the universe right, right you know right. but I guess I guess specks is not as nice a word as freckles right 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 yeah um, yeah no, I think that was like an interesting point that you brought up Ishan as well where we were talking before the, the chat as well just the idea of like subtitles um, yeah yeah um, you know. I mean, I think I, I was remembering it like because we we felt we felt this like when we were watching some of some of like the Korean films and like you know, the the um, Eastern films that we you know that that it seemed like there was so much going on, yeah. um, and and the the subtitles were sort of very cut or right? very like, just surface very, level, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and like very like very just like point to point, or you know, and then it was. It sort of felt, you know, I think we discussed this on a on a session um, way back when. I think Memories of Murder, I'm, maybe. Yeah, I think Memories of Murder, and I was thinking The Handmaiden also. Yeah. Um, that, like, you feel just from the, 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 the tone and just, like, how the actors are interacting with one another, that there's, there's more than, um, you know, what sort of what the subtitle is, mm-hmm. is telling us. And I think that's something that, you know, definitely you see it more in films, obviously that you you know both both languages um, or are familiar with both languages. And I think sometimes um, you lose, at, at least what what I like remember in this is that there was there were some moments that were really um, 
like really funny in like a very very conversational like a very colloquial familiar um way that the subtitles just like didn't do justice to you right. know like it sort of just like oversimplified it or like reduced it to something mm. um just so that you understood what they're talking about which which obviously is very useful and it allows so i'm not not saying anything against how much it allows um and increases access to films and stories right. but but it was just like a an interesting thing of like how do you navigate yeah um these these things right because in some cases like it makes it overly formal when in fact when in fact like you know because of the story and because of how everything is that there's a sense of comfort and familiarity between different characters right yeah and there's different shades of it i think whereas in, it sort yeah. of becomes one block with yeah the, i think a certain nuance is just lost in subtitling right and it's kind of it's 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 tough you know i think even as a you know as a filmmaker you have to like find that balance and kind of just get it done and all of that you know so i think it's definitely a difficult um thing to navigate for sure um but at the same time i think you know at least for me like obviously i don't understand marathi fully but at the same time um i think i like you know, obviously knowing Hindi and whatever, and I was able to, like, understand at least the background of these characters and how close they would be so that yeah, I yeah. got, I would say, like, maybe 75% of, you know, what was intended right, right. in a way, um, for sure. Um, I 100% agree with you, though. Subtitles definitely make it a lot tougher. Um, yeah. I mean, they sort of, they sort of, I feel like it's it's one more element, like, I mean, going back to what, you know, what you're saying, that, that the more... Uh, like with every cut that you add you sort of you get like you have to ask um viewers to like reinvest um yeah. you know and and i feel like with the subtitles sort of like keeps you at an arm's length mm. right, um, right most of the time which right. is like um which is an interesting i mean it's an interesting thing because i was like i'm just reminded of like a con you know there was a conversation that or that like no, I like been having over um, time, like even from from college and stuff, is just about um, translation, mm-hmm. um, and this is more related to obviously like writing and like literature and stuff. It is that how do you um, like what? Um, sorry, I'm just trying to phrase it appropriately, but like what is. one look at sorry can you just repeat that Ishan? i think of translation i think you kind of froze up a little bit can you repeat that yeah yeah i, I was saying how 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 does one look at the job or or um i forgot what the other word was the job or task of translation hmm. right um when it comes to say like novels literature and and then obviously um cinema as well yeah. but because i think that you know a lot of times you can there is there that's sort of an art in and of itself of course right? because you're you're conveying so much like so much can literally be lost in the translation well yeah because right? i think as a like even as a writer right when you read like even english for example in writing yeah. um like an author can choose to use shorter sentences and phrases and mix them with longer sentences and phrases. And, you yeah. know, imagine taking that from a foreign language into English or, you know, for, from yeah. one language to another. And in that translation, you lose the, like, you, you, even the rhythm of the, the writing. Also. Yeah, 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 exactly. You exactly. know, and then, exactly. and then also when it comes to, like, subtitling for a movie specifically, um, the, you know, it needs to be short enough that it's readable in, like, those three seconds or four seconds that it's on the screen. Because any longer, yeah, any, yeah. Um, you know, you're going to lose the viewer in terms of how much, you know, is on screen. I think, like, when when you do subtitling jobs, they even actually say you should be able to read all the way through the subtitle twice before you go to the next subtitle. Um Oh, wow. okay. yeah yeah so yeah, oh, that's and, interesting. I, yeah I mean because that's how that like that's a good way of knowing how much you've kind of how quickly you're yeah, pa- yeah. pacing those subtitles for the viewer to so read. you really like you really have to like be concise boil it down exactly yeah, exactly like, yeah so I, I mean I, yeah that, I mean that makes sense like you know it 
because you do obviously you want people to read it mm-hmm. and like reading times vary across people right yeah. um and then so obviously you you I'm, i am i mean i assume you take sort of like slower mm-hmm. readers yeah, into consideration. Uh, as your as your standard and then, exactly um yeah which is wild though yeah um but no i mean i mean i know like i i because like when i was you know studying like a bunch of like foreign foreign literature and stuff like mm-hmm. it's there was so much importance which i was really happy about um and i like learned a lot from that is that there's so much importance given yeah um and they sort of um head side by side other than um you know one above the other yeah um and i think obviously the best the best case scenario is when 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 the author has some hold on the language that Mm -hmm. they're translating into Mm -hmm. um so like i know like my my I guess most detailed uh, experience of that is with like reading um, books by Murakami, mm. right? Um, and then there, like, he has a number of. I mean, one I think the the thing that's helpful is that he speaks English quite well, and right. he does he translates um, English novels into Japanese. Yeah. Um, and then, so when we you know when it comes to his books, he's got a few. Um, sort of, I think, solid, like long-term um, translators that he works with every time. Right. So, but you know that, like, it's always, it's not going to be someone's interpretation mm-hmm. of the book alone, yeah. but it will be what he intended, right, right in the original Japanese. Um, I think sort of. Yeah, I, I'm trying to remember as well. back to high school as well. I think, like, for example, I, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's Dostoevsky, right? I think Dostoevsky has mm. like a few different translations for each of his books yeah. or many of his books. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so if I remember correctly, like our teacher even kind of was like very specific on like, you know, picking a specific translation get, yeah. of Crime and Punishment back in high school. I remember yeah. that. So, you know, I think that was also like a thing as well. Um it's like a very yeah no I, I think i think particularly like in those cases where they don't you know i mean there's there's such massive like or like long-standing classics yeah right that you don't um that there's people always translating them or like attempting to mm-hmm. have a better translation right right um and i think particularly i think it's it's it is dostoevsky or it's um nabokov but there, there's like mm-hmm. this like couple that yeah. like, translates right um them like who who now in terms of modern translations i think are supposed to be the best ones right right um right. but yeah so i think there's yeah, definitely I mean, I mean i think i think i mean i think just the, the core like just the amount of time that one spends mm. on like a translation versus like subtitling that right, mm. is, is so is like in, like it's just not comparable at all obviously right right Right. so i I mean i think that's just like so there's you're bound to to experience that Mm -hmm. um and i think that um you know what's what's interesting or like i guess i mean i I guess it's not not interesting it's just something that we have to know always and i Mm -hmm. guess just be um cognizant of yeah cognizant but also just like grateful that you're still able to access no of course um, i mean the the film because right? you learn i mean there's so much i mean i think this i mean what what's interesting is that so much of um like storytelling in in cinema also and in, in like in film happens like without like non-verbally yeah and i think yeah. just you know i mean kind of broadening the topic i think just speaking to like you know um regional films in india right i think because of just you know if you know at least one of the languages you know i think you can at least you know tonally understand it's 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 interesting i think you can tonally start to understand you know some of the other languages like i think from like hindi you can kind of understand the um like just the inflections the kind of the the way a you know a sentence is spoken even like if it was in gujarati or marathi or some of these other like you know at least yeah, northern yeah, yeah. Indian languages, you would be able to kind of understand some nuance if you like, you know, just listened and then you had the subtitles as well. So I think, I mean, yeah, that's 
incredibly like i mean that's incredibly helpful right i think um just in that sense um uh yeah yeah no exa exactly i mean i think that's something that that um you understand i mean there, there's this there's this youtube show i think or like a that talks about like non i mean like foreign language films mm -hmm. that i think we can we can find i think somebody had mentioned it on the telegram group but okay. we'll, we'll, we'll find it again mm -hmm. um but yeah i mean i think i think that's that's something that you you know i think you you see so much just across the board right like even in let's say um what's one that like in in marlena um, yeah that we watched right like you see so much of this um happening right when in in just the way the different characters like react to one another mm -hmm. facial expressions etc right that you you don't necessarily need to be familiar with with the language yeah right and you get you know and you sort of like understand what's happening before the subtitles are mm -hmm. even on on screen before before dialogue also as a um, film like like i mean it's interesting because the other thing is like for example a film like merlino the murder or maybe the yellow sea for example it's very um mm. it's very sparse on the dialogue you know it's very it's a very silent film yeah. and it's more about you know you're you're just kind of with the characters you're just seeing it kind of unfold and the dialogue kind of obviously helps the plot move along and all of that but i mean yeah theoretically you could even turn off some of the dialogue and still understand a lot of the film you know if you turn off the sound yeah exactly exactly um, no that's a good that's a good point i mean i think that that for like those films um, specifically um yeah uh, I mean, Drive is a good example. I think that yeah. a lot of people might have seen. Yeah. Did we have any um, comments in the YouTube? Um, no, not not this time. Okay. Cool. Um, or questions or anything. Um, I'm trying to think what else you, we would want to talk to, talk about in regards to yeah. I'm just, build. I'm thinking, um, I mean, so the the other thing that I I guess we can like talk about, which I didn't necessarily. I mean completely understand which i maybe it's just like my knowledge of like rural india was like the mm. the the structure of the political kind of um standing cuz you had that woman who was the like the yeah. sarpanch right essentially yeah and yeah which which i think is is supposedly the the village head right so then does like is bao like above her below her like where does he fit into the yeah, you know, yeah. i think he's thing. i think he's one he's one level above um yeah okay because it seemed like in a way she had like a lot of power in some sense over him in yeah, a way I, mean, I think i think i think what happened was that like you know when they they sort of um in that scene where they sort of conspired to have her do the flag hoisting yeah um, in place of him, I think that's sort of where I mean, where it, where at least for me, it, it the, the MLA, right, um, called him and said, "Oh, that was a great move, like very generous, very mm -hmm. um, benevolent of you." Right. right. So it, it sort of seems like she was the village, um, mm -hmm. like she's the 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 head, and he was the one who was the liaison he's the political mm. rep mm. um okay. of the village got it got it got it. that I makes think sense that's, um yeah it seems like what what yeah i'm also not overly familiar with the the like the, the specifics of the setup right 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 um yeah so i mean and, yeah and so i think it's like it's um yeah i think you know as a as a film it's just making this very um interesting uh I guess like just a comment, you know, on yeah. kind of a few different things, but I think especially just this idea of, you know, that that ever shifting, you know, balance or ever shifting scales with, you know, like I guess an old set of values and a new set of values, an old kind of world that they've yeah, lived yeah. in and kind of that modernization that we keep talking about. Um, especially in, you know, rural India where I think it's it's like the people like because like the other thing you you kind of realize at some point is the only person who really ever gets outside of the village area and into the city you know is Bao. 
and then yeah, his, exactly. his, and his nephew at one point. But you know, those are the only two real like people who kind of get out of the city and have seen, or at least in the world within the world of the film, have yeah. seen other things. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's like kind of like, it's like, is ignorance? I guess ignorance is bliss in a way, type of a thing. Yeah. Or it's kind of asking questions regarding that, at least. I mean, I, th- I mean, I think you know. I mean, just like what what's interesting is that they sort of all have, like, if you think about it, the the things that that they're trying to fight off or like just move beyond is that they're they they don't have a consistent um, supply of electricity right, or yeah. a stable. Uh, right and they and they don't have running water right so those are the two things yeah um that they do but what they do have right obviously is cell phones and um and which obviously it's not it's not like in every every like house Mm -hmm. but um what's what's interesting after like after the the um, sort of temple is set up and all of those things is that they you know, things become a bit more formal, right? Even with like in Bao's house, yeah. right? like his wife is um, like sort of helping him and like coordinating things for him. Right. And, like to got like a, fa- like a fancy table, there's yeah. like chairs. And what's, what's interesting that I thought is like, there's a landline. Yeah. Right? Um, you know, which was, which was a cool thing. Cause it was like, it was sort of like, this is like the formal, like this is the phone. Yeah. You know? Right. Um, and I, you know, I mean, and I think there's like some of those like small, small elements mm-hmm. that, that they add, like, um, you know, that we see because of all of, all of this modernization that they're, it's know, like dressing they, up a bit more. Yeah. It's like and, they didn't want the modernization because of the modernization. They wanted the modernization because the, you know, the entire business around the temple required that modernization. Sorry, yeah. so I think you can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think, I mean, I think that's sort of, I mean, that's that's one of the, the I guess, poignant points that Bao makes, right, to, mm-hmm. to Anna at the end before he leaves for Bangalore, is that, you know, he says, these were the things we struggled with, right? Yeah. And and now we have them, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but, like, to get them, you know, we had, to, we had to compromise a bit, but that's to be expected, right? Like, right. that's what you you can't um you know like you have to you have to do yeah some of that so and you know and and like it's interesting because he like acknowledges that but he says that you you sort of missing the point Mm -hmm. right in that you've you've not really done you know i don't because i i think he's very clear and, and very like um, particular about mentioning that he's not against the tradition right or like he's not against like the the focus or the importance given to yeah. like religion but he's saying that what have you he's 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 saying that you've inadvertently or or consciously right transformed it into something else mm-hmm. um and i think that's something that that he's realizing, you know, because I think it's very with with the hospital, it's it's very clear, right? You're you're, you know, working to progress, but you also you also know that it's a business that people will come here for this service, right? Definitely. Right, like when when they're unwell, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. When when a woman's pregnant, which is one mm-hmm. of the, the main like points that they mention. You know, and so there's there's a very clear sense of like this is a business, um, mm-hmm. and this is why we're doing it so that we can do all of these things. But you know, again, I think it also adds that question is that by choosing to make a temple and all of that, they've done that anyway, right? Like they have created a very s- strong business um, and like a support system for the the village. Yeah, absolutely. Um, cool. Uh, no, I, I think that's such a, you know, you know, I was just, I'm just like trying to like think about all that and also just like kind of like I had this idea, a thought, but it's fine. Um, as well. Um, no, you're right. I think. What was it? What was it? What was it? No, I was just, I was just kind of thinking about like this interesting, I was just thinking about this moment at the beginning of the film, which is actually like very comedic, but it also kind of talks or speaks to kind of the way the village you know, life kind of is or is mm. set up, which is when, you know, Keisha falls sick 
and all the ladies kind of come to see him and you know i was like just thinking about i was like I, I and I was just like you know I wonder if you know with the modernization and after everything that's happened and if Geisha was to fall sick later on in the film, if something like that would happen or if the if the sense of community or the sense of um you know the the way village life is, right. would it remain the same or would things have changed yeah. a lot by the end of the mm-hmm. film? And you know, I was just thinking about that. I was just like I mean off of what you were saying. Yeah, yeah. No, that was that was a really funny. That was that was, really, a, like, that funny was one of my favorite. I think just like as a scene, yeah, yeah. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, like each new woman come, comes comes yeah. in and like the yeah, like the response and like the reaction and yeah. then the, the like the choice of of their like their actions yeah. are like so uh, so like I mean like so similar. Like mm-hmm. it, it was it was um, yeah really really funny. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, I was just thinking of that after off, off of what you were saying. Um, but no, I think I think we covered I think I think we covered most of what we kind of discussed that we would talk about. Um, I don't know. Yeah, is there anything I else you wanted so. to add? Um, um, no, I think that's um, that's right. Did we get any questions or comments from anyone? If not, no worries. But um, no, not 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 today. Okay, no worries. All good. Um, yep. Cool. So. I guess we'll. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. that's that's that. We'll announce. So next, the next session will be on two weeks. Um, yeah, in two weeks from now, week twenty-four uh, okay. will be on the tenth. Tenth. Uh, sorry, on the eleventh of okay. of October, and we're we're watching Death in the Gunj by um, Konkana San Sharma, and we will also have uh the pleasure of having her on join us for the session yeah so if anyone has any specific questions for her really likes the film mm-hmm. with us while it's on the telegram group and um obviously youtube live but um i'm, I'm personally really excited for mm-hmm. that because i really enjoyed that film Absolutely. Um, when it came out, and I'm looking forward yeah. to watching it again with all of sort of the, um, sort of the stuff that we, you know, just the way we've been um, watching. watching films, yeah. and just like getting, yeah, just like sort of like how that's mm-hmm. sort of changed and developed over these yeah. past. Yeah. Yeah. Um, really, uh, so, yeah. Sorry, Sean. I think you froze up for a second. Um. But no, I just wanted to add on, like, yeah, if you have any questions, like, you know, the earlier you can get them to us, then we can figure out ways to kind of incorporate how we're going to talk about those, you know, questions and all of that into our conversation. Yeah. So we're very much looking forward to next session. 